ionisation energy. I guess the question has to be what is ionisation energy? And the answer is here we're concerned with removing an electron from an atom. Put simply, here is what's supposed to be the atom of an element. We can, given circumstances, remove an electron from that atom and if we remove this electron it would become a positively charged ion. We ionised it. In chemistry we don't use the right minus electron, we, we move the electron over to this side, still the same thing, but it ends up with a positive charge. So here is the same process. Our atom has lost an electron and consequently become a positively charged ion. In the case of ionisation energy, we're concerned with doing this on a mole scale. It would take very little energy to remove one electron from one atom, but we have a mole of electrons and we're removing, rather we have a mole of atoms and we're removing electrons from them, then the energy required is quite considerable. Furthermore, this has to be gas. The element may be a gas naturally, or in most cases it has to be turned into a gas before this process can be carried out. So there you have it. There's the equation that represents an ionisation energy. Strictly speaking, this represents the first ionisation energy, because having removed an electron, you could go on to remove a second electron. So, we've taken away the first electron, let's remove the second electron. And, having removed the second electron, we could go on to remove the third electron, and so on. In fact, we could keep removing electrons until we ran out of electrons. Information on ionisation energy can be found in the data book, and if you have any doubt about ionisation energy, it's well worth rough referring to page 10. Now, what about the trend in ionisation energy? If you're asked a question about the trend, you could always detect the trend by looking at the numbers in the book. In other words, does it become easier or difficult, more difficult to remove electrons as we go across the, the table or down the table? Let's go from lithium to neon. Now we're removing an electron. Lithium has three protons. It's holding the electrons in place with three protons. Neon, however, has 10 protons and will have a much stronger grip on its electrons. So it's no surprise to discover that it takes less energy to remove an electron from lithium than it does to remove an electron from neon. In fact, the values are here. To remove a mole of electrons from lithium requires 526 kilojoules per mole, whereas in the case of neon, it's four times that. It's 2,090 kilojoules. So once again, that's because the outer electron in lithium is not held as strongly as the outer electron in neon. Again, if we were to inquire as to the trend down a group in the table, what would we find? If you didn't know, you could always check the data book. If we go down group 1, as far as say cesium, we'll find that the ionisation energy is decreasing. It's becoming easier to remove an electron. It requires less energy. The data book says that for cesium, the value is down to 382. Why should that be? Why is it taking less energy? The answer is because, in the case of lithium, the electron being removed is in the second shell, relatively close to the nucleus. In the case of cesium, the electron being removed is far removed from the nucleus. 2,8,8,8,1. It's six shells out from the nucleus. It's effectively shielded from the nucleus. And therefore, not being held as strongly, it's relatively easy to remove. But as I say, if you're trying to work out the trend, you simply have to look for the trend in the data book. Now, what about successive ionisation energies? Let's have a look at an example of an element which removes one electron after another. A good example would be aluminium. Now, an aluminium atom could lose an electron. There it goes. And according to the data book, the first 
ionization energy of aluminium is 584. But what about if we try to remove a second electron? Well, we'll find that having removed one electron, the remaining electrons are held a bit more tightly. So here we are, picking up where we left off. We've already removed one electron, we're about to remove a second electron. According to the data book, it's more difficult now, the value is up to 1830. Starting with aluminium 1 plus and making it aluminium 2 plus requires a bit more energy. And as we keep removing electrons, it becomes progressively more difficult to do so. So when we try to turn aluminium 2 plus into aluminium 3 plus, in other words, remove the third electron, it's no surprise to discover it's more difficult still. The value this time is up to 2760. What would happen if we tried to remove yet another electron? Let's have a look. If we go from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium 4 plus, removing just one more electron, we might have expected a fairly steady increase, but we discover now the value has rocketed from 2000 to over 11,000. Why the sudden massive increase in ionization energy? This huge number tells us it's suddenly much more difficult to remove this fourth electron. The reason is this. If we go back here, starting at aluminium, we're removing an electron from the third shell. Here, having removed an electron, we're still removing an electron from the third shell. And so on. But here, we've removed all the electrons from the third shell. There are none left. And in this case, what we're trying to do is to remove an electron from an inner shell. This shell is suddenly much closer to the nucleus, and not only much closer to the nucleus, it's a stable shell. So for two reasons, it's suddenly much more difficult to remove this fourth electron. You very often find, you will always find in fact, that when you've emptied an outer shell and are trying to remove an electron from an inner shell, there will always be a sudden increase in value. This can be seen by consulting the data book. Let's take one example like that. Why don't we take magnesium, for example? The first ionization energy of magnesium is 744. What are we doing there? What we're doing there is removing the first of magnesium's two outer electrons. There we are. Let's take away the second electron. And the second electron requires that energy. But the third electron is now being removed from an inner shell, and that's reflected in the value which rockets to 7750. So we find, much as predicted, easy to remove the outer two electrons, but much more difficult to remove the third one. The third one being in an inner shell.